I'm Darren Marlar, and this is a Weird Darkness Bonus Bite. From Ancient Origins, Sadistic Vlad the Impaler Cried Real Tears of Blood Study Reveals, written by Nathan Fold. Vlad Dracul, the infamous medieval Romanian ruler known as Vlad the Impaler and the inspiration for the character of Count Dracula, is considered one of the most bloodthirsty rulers in human history. This identification now seems more apt than ever as a team of Romanian and Italian chemists has just released a study claiming that Vlad the Impaler literally, not metaphorically, cried tears of blood. In an article just published in the journal Analytical Chemistry, scientists from the University of Catania, Spring Style Tech Design Limited, the Romania National Archives, and Politecnico di Milano reported on evidence they uncovered showing that the real-life inspiration for Count Dracula suffered from many illnesses and medical conditions. The study reveals that his tears of blood were caused by a medical condition that would leak blood into his tear ducts on any occasion where he felt the urge to weep. While not the most serious of ailments, the most eye-opening of Vlad the Impaler's disorders was the incredibly rare hemolacria, which causes a person to cry tears that contain actual blood. Those who saw Vlad the Impaler shedding tears of blood might have considered it a reflection of his evil nature rather than seeing it as a medical condition. To learn more about Vlad Dracul's death, Romanian and Italian scientists performed a chemical analysis of proteins and peptides that were removed from three letters that he wrote in the 15th century. Between 1448 and 1476, the original Prince of Darkness ruled over the lands of Wallachia, which today make up the southern half of the country of Romania. For the purposes of this new study, the chemists applied a substance known as ethanol vinyl acetate to the outer surface of the three valuable historical documents written by Vlad the Impaler. This chemical can absorb and transfer proteins and peptides, or protein building blocks, from any kind of surface, and in this case, these molecules were left on the letters by Vlad when he handled them. Using this methodology, the scientists were able to remove remaining organic residues that contained over 500 peptides and proteins, of which 100 were human in origin. The peptides were assumed to have come from Vlad the Impaler, not from other individuals who may have handled the letters, since the scientists took samples from areas where a letter writer would be repeatedly touching the paper with the palm and side of the writing hand. Among the peptides recovered were a type of molecule associated with a group of cellular disorders known as ciliopathies. These troublesome conditions can cause malfunctioning of the organs and lead to the development of many debilitating and painful symptoms of illness. Other peptides revealed that Vlad the Impaler also had an infection of the respiratory tract at the time he was handling at least one of the letters. This condition may have been temporary, like a cold or the flu, or it could have been a chronic condition that he struggled with for years. But the most significant discovery from the perspective of the modern observer came from a letter Vlad the Impaler wrote in 1475. From this one, the chemists were able to extract samples of three peptides that came from the retina and the fluid of tears. It's not known exactly why Vlad would have been crying while writing this letter, but it seems he was, and his tears fell onto it and left behind these chemical traces. Based on the unusual properties of these peptides, the scientists reached the astounding conclusion that Vlad must have suffered from hemolacria, in which varying quantities of blood will flood the tear ducts and mix with tears. This condition is ultra-rare, which is why it is so remarkable to discover that a person well-known in history actually had it, and not just any person but the man who was the real-life version of literature and film's most famous blood-drinking vampire. From studying eye secretions alone, the scientists were not able to diagnose the underlying cause of the hemolacria. The condition can develop after a person suffers from bacterial conjunctivitis or if they have some type of injury to the area close to the tear ducts. In some cases, it can be caused by a tumor in the eye area. The amount of blood produced by a case of hemolacria can vary greatly from person to person. Some people who get it will cry tears that are only slightly tinged with red, while others will cry tears that are so blood-saturated that they appear dark red. It certainly would have been appropriate if Vlad the Impaler's eyes leaked tears the color of pure blood. Vlad's bleeding eyes revealed his true character and would have undoubtedly struck terror into the hearts of any of his enemies who got close enough to see him crying. 
This new study represents a breakthrough in Vlad Dracul scholarship. To our reckoning, this is the first time such research has been carried out and has helped to bring to the limelight the health status of Vlad Dracula the Impaler, the study authors wrote in their analytical chemistry article. In most instances, the health issues of a medieval prince who ruled over an obscure region of Eastern Europe for less than three decades wouldn't generate much public interest. But the exploits of Vlad the Impaler have become the stuff of legend, thanks mainly to the choice of author Bram Stoker to attach his name to a character that introduced the vampire to modern audiences. Vlad the Impaler was arguably much more bloodthirsty than the fictional Count Dracula. Historians have credited him with the deaths of over 80,000 enemy soldiers and innocent civilians during his struggle to keep Wallachia independent from the Ottoman Empire. The Impaler label refers to Vlad's favorite means of execution, which is how the majority of his victims met their demise. Events that took place in 1462 reveal the depth of Vlad Dracul's psychopathic depravity. That year, the Ottoman Empire Sultan Mehmed II led an army of 90,000 men towards Wallachia as part of the Sultan's ongoing efforts to conquer the future lands of Romania and absorb it into his kingdom. In order to stop the invasion, Vlad the Impaler ordered the impalement of more than 23,000 prisoners his forces had captured during guerrilla raids into Ottoman territory. As Mehmed's army advanced, they were greeted with the horrible sight of these unfortunate souls, including men, women, and children, impaled on stakes lining the route to Wallachia. Totally sickened by what they saw, Mehmed's army turned around and headed back to Constantinople so that Vlad would stop doing what he was doing. In a letter Vlad wrote to the King of Hungary, Matthias I, he explained exactly what had happened in unemotional, matter-of-fact language. His soldiers had killed peasants, men and women, old and young, he stated. We killed 23,884 Turks without causing those whom we burned in homes or the Turks whose heads were cut by our soldiers. To back up his claims, Vlad produced sacks filled with body parts that had been cut off his victims. In actual fact, none of the men, women, and children who Vlad decided to execute were Ottoman Turks. They were innocent Serbian and Bulgarian civilians whose peoples had been conquered by the Ottomans and who had no affection for their occupiers. If Vlad the Impaler cried tears of blood after these events, he would have been doing so in joy, not in sorrow delighted to know that his efforts to intimidate the Ottoman Empire forces had worked. Perversely, the terrible nature of Vlad Dracula's deeds are what have made him a legend, and Bram Stoker's incredibly influential 1897 novel and the lead character he created ensured that this true Prince of Darkness would never be forgotten. Find the link to the original story in the show notes, and find more news in the Weird News and blog at WeirdDarkness.com. Hey Weirdos, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com listen.